You don't like to be hurt, do you? Oh, I don't know. Kind of fun sometimes. God doesn't like me enough to let me die. So I'll try my blood pressure sky fucking high. Palpitations will increase my anxiety. On October 11th, 1994, a band called Korn would release their debut album. It would eventually be credited towards pioneering new metal and popularizing the subgenre to the mainstream. Formed in 1993 by three members of the band LAPD, James Schaefer, who would take up the stage name Monkey, Reginald Arvizu, who would be Fieldy, and David Silveria. Brian Welch would go by Head, and Jonathan Davis would join the band as well. And Jonathan Davis is credited for designing the original logo with a crayon, but James Schaefer would be the one who thought of the K and backwards R after someone pitched the name Korn with traditional spelling. Korn rented a studio from Jeff Kreeth, called Underground Chicken Sound, in Huntington Beach, California. While they were recording at Underground Chicken Sound, a crowd had been loitering outside the studio. The band began playing a prelude to a song that would become Clown, resulting in a larger crowd gathering. The band was then spotted by Immortal Records A&R employee Paul Pontius. Pontius would describe Korn's sound as, quote, the new genre of rock. In 1993, Korn then released their first demo album, Nadermeyer's Mind. The album had very limited printing and was not well received by critics or the public. The demo did contain a more raw and harsh delivery by Jonathan Davis and included the original lyrics for Blind, one of their most famous and arguably best songs. It featured just four songs, Blind, Alive, A Misspelling of Predictable, and Daddy. These songs will make it to the debut self-titled album in 1994 as well, including one that would garner its own amount of infamy because of its disturbing and allegedly true narrative and lyrics. The song Daddy is an extremely emotional and disturbing song. It is the twelfth and final track on Korn's debut album, and it focuses on the childhood sexual abuse of Jonathan Davis and his perspective of being a child and going through this and not being believed. The song ending with a very real mental breakdown by Jonathan as the band eerily continues instrumentation throughout most of it. This injection of personal demons into the music isn't exactly new. Artists do this all the time, myself included, but Jonathan Davis' life was far from easy. Jonathan Davis was born on January 18th, 1971, in Bakersfield, California. He was in a band called Sex Art that formed in 1989, which recorded around 20 tracks, but never signed to a label. Only one song by Sex Art has been released, called Inside, and it would appear that Blind existed in some form or another as a Sex Art song prior to Jonathan's departure of the band, resulting in the band later attempting to sue him in later years for reworking the song on the debut Korn album. 
Jonathan also worked as an assistant coroner and suffered from depression greatly throughout his teen years. With that and his occupation, he effectively desensitized himself to death, but really kept to himself. However, this quiet, nerdy shut-in would suffer his entire childhood through family trauma, bullying, and sexual abuse. Growing up in the late 1970s and 80s and suffering from severe asthma, multiple times between the ages of 3 and 5, Jonathan Davis was hospitalized and nearly lost his life, also having to suffer invasive and often elongated and painful procedures to open his airways. Shortly after this time is when his abuse began. His parents divorced when he was just three years old, and his father, Rick Davis, was more career-focused, and spent his days producing music and chasing a dream of fame through that. Jonathan's mother remarried to a man quickly, someone she'd met while working on the production of Jesus Christ Superstar. This man would treat Jonathan poorly and was quite violent. An incident when he was just 13 years old would prompt Jonathan to move in with his father when he purchased a drum kit of his own, but his stepfather destroyed it in a violent outburst. His mother was also extremely abusive. She was the type of maternal abuser that viewed Jonathan as an obstacle in her happy life, so she took her frustrations out on her son, and one instance even pouring hot sauce down his throat when he was sick, she beat him and psychologically abused him as well on a regular basis, including demasculating him when he would cry or show emotions. At some point during his childhood, presumably when he was between the ages of 5 and 9 years old, Jonathan would be continuously abused sexually by a described friend of the family. Confusion with the song Daddy and its lyrical direction had fans misunderstanding the narrative and believing that Jonathan was molested by his father, which is not the case. He has since spoken about the incident, and not in too much detail, but described the family friend as female, sometimes as a babysitter, but she has since died. His sexual, physical, and otherwise psychological abuse from his family and peers in school all contributed to Jonathan Davis's downward spiral mentally in life, and eventual addiction to drugs and alcohol. You know the first step. Specifically methamphetamine, which played a huge role in the creation of Korn's first two albums. In fact, the second song off the album, Ball Tongue, is about a guy who used to help make t-shirts for the band, but was also the band's hookup for meth. They called him Ball Tongue. Ball Tongue got his nickname because he would get so high on meth he would sit with his eyes drifting all over the place aimlessly, with his tongue hanging out in a ball as is common with heavy methamphetamine users. Ball Tongue eventually turned on the band, stealing their electronics and instruments, hence the lyrics, You were my brother, the friendship ends. Notably, this would be the first song that Jonathan Davis utilized scat-style vocals in. Korn would be no stranger to pushing boundaries in regards to lyrics and themes as well. They became the poster child for a young generation who suffered from abusive upbringings and childhood trauma. They spoke to a generation of people who felt low, weak, hurt, and angry. But within all their dark and often disturbing songs, few compared to the haunting and downright heart-wrenching presence of Daddy. The chorus of the song reads, You raped, I feel dirty, it hurt as a child, tie down, that's a good boy, and fuck your own child. I scream, no one hears me, it hurt, I'm not a liar. My god, I saw you watching. Mommy, why your own child? From a glance, this can be confusing to a listener, and it even could imply that Jonathan's mother was the abuser. But further analysis reveals that the narrative of the song is not so straightforward. You raped, I feel dirty. It hurt as a child. Tied down, that's a good boy. And fuck your own child. I weep, no one hears me. It hurt as a child tied down no one hit me and raped your own child i'm sick no one hears me it hurt as a child 
tied down, that's a good boy, you fucked your own child. I speak and no one hears me, it hurt as a child, tied down, no one hears me, mommy, why your own child? Then it continues onto the bridge, I didn't touch you there, mommy said she didn't care, I didn't touch you there. That's why mommy stopped and stared. This song takes multiple views from Jonathan's childhood pain and his trauma. The feelings of being ignored by your parents is a huge factor in this song's themes. The shaming of a victim and the disbelief that comes with it, being called a liar for crying for help. The confusion and shame that comes with being victimized is really all near impossible for a child to process, all, let alone all alone, in an already abusive environment. This is common in abusive family dynamics, where a child will be sexually abused and go for help, but be shunned and not believed, while the accused continues traumatizing often until they die. Often this, and with possible witnesses, other loved ones, etc., shame and deny the victim or victims. Why people deny witnessing such things is beyond me. Why deny your child was abused? Jonathan Davis felt his parents knew, and even in the song addresses this directly. That's why mommy stopped and stared. This would have forever changed his life, and often for children who survive these ordeals, it changes their lives for the worst and sometimes makes them abusers themselves. Jonathan Davis has struggled immensely in his life, and Daddy is one of the many songs that echo the cries of abuse from his childhood, and it has also spoken to countless fans for over 20 years. And Korn's had their ups and downs, and more cringe moments than many bands share, but overall, the talent and heart behind the music is among the greatest in generations, especially for a subgenre of metal. Korn to me is a very special band, okay? They were my favorite band of all time in my early teens forever. Like, I, I mean, I don't know when the fuck I first started listening to them, but they were my gateway band into heavier music. And for me, they spoke to me too lyrically. You know, I was not an emo kid. I was very anti-trend. Uh, this may come as a surprise to you guys, I guess, but very against the whole emo thing. But I did, you know, the emotional lyrics, so to speak, really hit close to home. And I grew up in an abusive household. So as I got older, these lyrics started to make more and more sense. And it's just, wow, like this song in general is so fucked up. And I mean, yeah, it's corn. People are like, it's, it's corn. You know what I mean? It gets corny with corn. But this was a whole lot more like this. You got to remember, this is when the band was new. This was raw. This was drug fueled and sad. Like this was some crazy hard shit actually if you really sit and think about it in fact i think corn's first album is severely underrated in metal in general it's like a fucking mind-blowing piece of 90s music whether you like the band or not it's very revolutionary in its type despite the beginning to uh blind being totally ripped off of uh primus as too many puppies other than that though i mean i've been a big fan of corn growing up I, I really hated their cringe ass phases they've been through they're obviously i i can cherry pick some songs they haven't really had a great album in a hot minute but back then it was definitely real it was a very cool album but then hearing that track especially as an ending track to a whole hard ass album you're like you know taken back what the fuck i mean the way they just kind of awkwardly play the rest of the song while he's sobbing is pretty intense not to mention the lyrical themes being about child sexual abuse like that's that's something a little different especially with how blunt it was and it was in to me it gives very like almost sludge metal fucking type vibes and it's not though it's different obviously very very different but you guys have actually asked me to cover this for a while, and I was kind of beating around the bush on it, like, ah, it's fucking corn. But then I sat and thought about it, and, you know, it's like, this is a very, very good video topic, so thank you for suggesting that, all of you. And as well as just pay close attention to it. Don't snub it off by the band. Uh, this is some pretty heavy, traumatic shit. And it's really crazy, because this is an all-too-common occurrence with people, and like I said, sometimes these people turn into abusers themselves. Not everybody turns out as someone who's just wanting to speak up on it. Like, I consider myself an advocate for people who were abused and stuff. Because I grew up like that, and I don't think people should. But there's other people who just repeat the cycle, and it goes on and on for generations, and it's really sad. But sometimes that shit really breaks people, and it's incredible that Jonathan Davis survived all this, and then 
did his best at least to keep a career going. And I mean, still to this day, people are getting into core in almost the same way as that, like, my generation did back when I was younger, so to speak, you know? And it's really weird to see that and goes to show that these patterns of abuse kind of breed the same mentalities and victims, you know? It's like people want a voice, they want to be heard, and they want to be validated. Just know if you experience that type of lifestyle, you are valid, and you're worth it. Don't let anybody get you down on that shit. And apparently, for a lot of people, including myself, we got to credit corn for helping us get by in some hard times back then. But holy shit, man. Like, that song's heavy as fuck. Heavy in the aspect of topics. Sound, take it or leave it. But, like, I implore you to listen to it, even if you don't like the band, just to get a grasp into... I guess the pain someone experiences when they go through something like this because it it's terrible. It changes you forever and you never forget that pain. You never forget that confusion. You never forget it. People say, oh, you know, you you move on or whatever. Yeah, you move on, but you don't forget that. But that's really all I have for this one. I mean, to me, Corn will always have a special place in my heart, even though I don't listen to him much anymore. But the song's intense. Uh, viewer discretion for that one, I guess. You know, be warned. It's very triggering for people who have been through shit, but maybe it's also validating. I don't know. You tell me down in the comments below what you think about it. But for now, just check out the links in the description. Hit me up on Twitter. You can let me know there, too. Check out the Patreon so you can get in that Discord. Get all that on, you know, fucking... Join the Patreon so you can get in the Discord. Tell me directly there, too. You know? <laughs> There's a lot of ways, actually, that you guys can communicate with me, and I like that. I like being able to connect with you guys. It's really cool. Suggest videos in there, too. You're also getting 12 hours of unreleased content and much, much more. But thank you so much for watching again, and I'm Plague Moth. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that and hit that bell icon. That way you get notified whenever I post a video. I also let you know when I'm going live every Saturday on Twitch. Anyway. I'm gonna go take a shower now.